Welcome, guys. Today, I'm going to talk about um, very simple web applications. So basically, you know, fr you know, from time to time when I'm visiting the website and I like some of the feature, and then I would like to write those. And instead of writing those into, in, I don't know, maybe in, in, in a Visual Studio opening up, you know, like big, a big editor and stuff like that, I would like to open fire a very simple node application you know node we can write node application very very easily for the simple demo application or even like for a complicated thing because we have whole uh, mini stack available to do it but today what I'm going to talk about is a couple of things here these are the topics that we're going to talk about today we will be uh, of course doing the live demo I have a code that I will explain to you how to do it and stuff like that so this is what I'm going to talk into this video, series of video tutorial. These are our topic going to be. Uh, we'll, be we'll be talking about very first thing, uh, CSS Sprite. If you guys are not familiar with the CSS Sprite is, then we'll talk about it and how to create the CSS Sprite for the given images and why it is important. Or maybe, you know, right now there are so many alternative ways you can achieve the same functionality. Maybe we can talk about both pros and cons of the CSS Sprites. And then when we're talking about CSS Sprite, most important thing that we have to know is that one CSS property called background images and, two pos and, and how the background position images really works. Uh, and then, of course, you know, this would be, um, I'll be writing some JavaScript to, okay, even before going further, what I would like to do is I would like to uh, show you the demo that I have written. So uh, this is this is very simple uh, node application node website. I'm using some some of the technology that I'm using is of course CSS, here to JavaScript, and I'm using the jQuery also to write this JavaScript API. And as in the server side, I'm using the Node.js to serve the website. And you know, like um, when you're writing a code in Node, I mean the writing code in Node and writing website. Then in the need of the templating engine becomes very important because you would like to share the you know code and stuff like that. For that purpose, to um, to render the, the the HTML, I have a Jade engine, Jade templating engine. It is very easy to learn, and the syntax is very um, easy. And I have very you know open source editor, Visual Studio Code editor. It's open source from the Microsoft. You can just download it. It's very lightweight, and you can create. You can write all kind of code in there. And as a tool, I use a PowerShell to execute my Node um, application, okay, to start my website. That So we have a lot of things to cover. So let me first simply show you the um, how, how my application is going to look like. So, I mean, this is my Node PowerShell here. In this location, I have this little application called Node Website Uno. Let's see, there are some of the files here. So to start my website, all I have to do is I have to type node here. Of course, you know, if you do not have a node installed in your machine, then you'll have to install it. But in my case, you know, I have that installed already. And I'm going to ask node, hey, node, go ahead and run this file called app.js. So what happens here when this, this JavaScript file that I will show you later when I, when I run, when I execute this one, we have our web server running. It is listening on port number 8002 in my case. You can use any port number that is not used by any other application. You can do that configuration. So now it is the server, web server is now running and listening for, um, for the request. So I'm going to open the browser here. And let's go HTTP localhost. Okay, this is the application that I'm going to talk about, and I will show you how to do it. Even specifically, this piece of this feature right here. This is, you know, if most of the website, then, you know, the social media site, if you go to any website, they can, they say, okay, follow us on Twitter, follow us in the Facebook or LinkedIn or Google Plus or Twitter, Instagram or whatever. You know, they, these are like a common feature. So uh, most of the website, they would like to, at least publicly facing website, they would like to have this, you know, feature available. So what I have done, what I have done in this website 
is basically I uh, first downloaded these images, Google Images, and then instead of using the, uh, the reason I wanted to talk about CSS Sprite is because this is a very simple example. So let's say if you have like one, two, three, four, in my case, I have six images. If, you, if I do not use a Sprite, then what happens when you make an HTTP request, or it will make, you know, request, multiple requests to the server for those images to face down to the browser face from the server and render to the browser, right? But if you put it, the, so if you put this one into a sprite, what happens is like you're basically downloading the one image. Of course, it can be a little bigger in size, but if you compare, compared to all the, instead of having like one, two, three, five, six different images and downloading separately, you have one big image, but it would be faster. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna talk about. The very first thing, um, to create this, if you guys are not familiar with the Sprite images, this technology, the Sprite, has been in use since long time for like background processes. When we had a bad system, I uh, based on my research, it was available since 1975 or something like that for to do a batch process. You know, instead of like doing multiple batch process or, or whatever, they would just grab the whole batch and put it into the memory and just kind of serve it from there. The same idea applies here in the in the website development. The idea is like you have big, you have so many images to download. Instead of put, uh, downloading all those images, you know, uh, with a multiple HTTP request, what we're going to do is we're going to put all the images into um, one multi, one big image and download that one at one time, okay? Of, of course, you know, with any technology, it has both pros and cons. And recently, of course, there is other better ways than is using a sprite too. I'm not saying that you have to use it, but it's good to learn. You know, that's that's what that's what I'm basically in book. I'm trying to say. Okay, let's too much about this. Let's look it into the code. How we can? This is like I said here. I have simple, this is my um, Visual Studio Code Editor. So, let me, s and I created this project structure using one of the, the some of the templating engine provided by Express. So all these uh, like project st structure like, here the most important thing that in post I'm gonna talk, like I said to you, I'm gonna talk about the sprite first. So I'm gonna go into the public folder here and I have images, the image, this is a sprite right here, see? It contains the YouTube, Facebook, all these images as a one image. This is, that. that is what the sprite is, right? And then, of course, the, the once we have a sprite, then we need to know CSS. So, so that's why I create a little, um, CSS here called social.css here. Um, no, this is JavaScript. Here is a social.css. We're going to talk about this CSS and how to, how, so this property of the background position becomes very, very important to, to understand when you, when you, when you are working with those sprites. Okay. That we're going to talk about it later. And then I have a JavaScript to render this, uh, <clears throat> JavaScript. I, I will talk about this JavaScript. I have this JavaScript API that I wrote uh, to to render this. So let me show you what I mean. by render this. For example, if I go into my website here, let's say for some reason I don't like to have this available here. I want this um, this images for this my social media images right here on the top somewhere, right? So if I want to do that, then I don't have to write huge amount of uh, uh, HTML because I have the JavaScript API. So all I have to do now is um, do, 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 do. Okay, this is how this API basically works. I basically assign, give this ID right here. And, okay, this, if you are not familiar with this one, like like I told you before, you know, this is the syntax for the Jade templating engine that I'm using on this project. 
So uh, this is how you create a deep tag. So th this this JD is basically all depends upon the tab. So here this div and they are in the same level. That's why they are here. This S2 tag, the deep tag, all in the same level. So I have a deep container here with the, I give the ID, and then to use that our JavaScript API that I wrote, all I have to do is just I have this social loader and it has a method called build social tag and I just provide the ID of wherever I want to load this one, okay? Let's see, I would like to have this feature available in my, um, this is my, uh, uh, this is my layout page, it's kind of like a master page in, in ASP.NET if you come from that background or the, that's what this uh, layout page is or, or if you are in ASP.NET MVC, the same idea, you know, so um, Let's say I have this this ID right here. Since I have not used it, so what I would like to do here is I have this deep already defined. So I'm going to write some little JavaScript so that it would render there. To do that, um, I'm going to copy this piece of code. Somewhere Okay, here is my JavaScript. This is how we define JavaScript in this is a syntax for writing JavaScript in Jade Engine, okay? Here is a script. It render as I will show you the how it renders by the browser later. So we have a script tag here, type JavaScript, and this is very important. You have to start with the dot, and then I have since I'm using jQuery here, when the DOM is loaded, then I'm going to call my API. That API contains a method called that, and it expects this um, this ID. But of course, it's not going to be that ID. We we're going to grab this ID from here, and then just set it there so if everything is good syntax is okay then we should have our net our, our media let me run this one. Oh, it doesn't like that here this is this error is indentation unexpected token here this indentation error is from the from the uh, jade engine you know that's what it's, it is saying I got I definitely have some error here so let me see how does it look into Why it doesn't like to Let's put this into a hate section of the of the HTML. This kind of makes sense here. Yay! Okay, this is what I was talking about. Okay, so uh, as you can see, you don't have to write any extra code or anything. All you have to do is just call that API. It automatically came out here. This is this this. I don't want this image to be coming here, but as you can see. It's because of the, the, the clipping, because the padding that I have here. Okay, that is why I wanted to... Um, so, as you can see, I don't have to write a huge amount of HTML to do to do this stuff right here, since the API automatically did for me. So, that, that is the, the, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today, okay? Okay, let's talk about the JavaScript, how to do it. So, uh, okay, that is, is my JavaScript. I have some libraries that I, 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 my goal is to convert this into a full-fledged web application that I can, you know, uh, write, that I can do a um, tutorial for my user in the, in the YouTube. But today, I'm just going to share about this portion of the code. Here is my API, Kill Social. 
Okay, so I have this, oh, here is line number four, I have this self-executing function, it's also called iffy, right? It, it's, it's, and it has, I pass the jQuery as a, as a uh, it takes a jQuery as a, as a, it's a dependency or a parameter here. Okay, it's my, uh, I, uh, I pass the jQuery object to it, and this guy gets calls right away, and in the result of the invocation is assigned to this variable called social loader. That's why I was able to, in my uh, layout, I was able to just say social loader and this. Okay. Okay, that is about that variable. So this in inside here, I have all these are private. Whenever I write the API, you know, like if you don't have to expose a lot of things to, to outside world, you don't have to. So this this class right here, the JavaScript, only thing it's a publicly available, accessible is this guy right here. Remember this line number 95, it's returning this um, this object here. This object has a build social tag. That's what I was calling here, build. That, that's the only thing available out of that object. And I assign the, the, the key value pair here, build social tag, which is basically referring to this private uh, JavaScript function here okay and of course this guy takes a parameter as a deep container the the the, the DOM object into which you want to display that um, social media icons so here once these methods get called I have to remember I have another object that object is responsible for creating that DOM and giving that result to me so here, let's go ahead and talk about this social anchor builder, our JavaScript object. Here is this private object. Private because it is inside this object. It is only available to this. Here is that I define this uh, JavaScript object, a function. And it takes a, it takes a container. And uh, what I do here, I have a bunch of tags. I, I define some of the private fields that I need. I need the tags. I will tell you what the tags are later. You will understand as we go deeper into it. And here is my parent container, whatever user pass in. But this div, of course, I have to use jQuery. That's the ID of the DOM object and grab. I grab the DOM object. And then very first thing I have to do is I have to call this, you know, the eight social tag. That method we're going to call. Okay, what this guy does you'll understand. Let's go into oops, definition. Okay, that's very easy here. Here is this using the prototype of the, of the JavaScript. I define a method called add, add social tags. Let me collapse this one so we can see it better. So in here, in, in what we're adding here is basically we define, here is our tag, which the, uh, that was defined into our class, and this is an array. Into it, I'm going to put some anonymous object. That object contains properties like name, it's Facebook, and corresponding value here, like a title, follow us on Facebook, and then some other properties like blank, and then a CSS class. We're going to talk about this CSS class the next step. And then this is very important. Of course, you, let's say if you decide to use this one, then, of course, you know, based on your website, you'll have to change. You have to, of course, first create your website. Your web page is in, in Facebook or Instagram or, 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 or LinkedIn or whatever. Whatever you create it there, then you're going to change your URL. Maybe just basically that portion right here. This is, for example, mine, right? So basically, I defined a bunch of uh, anonymous objects having those properties that I need later, and then push that into my tags. This is what the tag is. That is all this method does. Okay, that is done. And uh, okay, now, as you can see, when this method, the, when instance of this method is created, 